Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. If I've timed this right, and I think I have, you're watching the one-year anniversary episode of the Creative Cow After Effects podcast. That's right. We've been going strong since December 21st, 2005. Since that time, Creative Cow has built three new podcasts, making it a total of five. We've also started a magazine, which, when I record this, currently has two issues in print, with another one on the way. We've added three titles to the Creative Cow Master Series of DVDs, giving you even more ways to take Creative Cow with you wherever you go. So, I suppose you're wondering what this has to do with After Effects, and that's a fair question. The answer is, not much. We're just taking a moment to pat ourselves on the back and to thank you, our members, for sticking with us and helping us to build, hands down, the best community of creative professionals online. Okay, now on to the tutorial. And since we're being all nostalgic about how much has changed in a year, I'm going to jump way back in time to one of my earliest tutorials in which I showed you how to create an old television look. Since that time, I've been asked repeatedly, how do you animate a TV turning on and off? Well, because you've been so patient, I'm going to show you my recipe for doing just that. So here I am in After Effects with my old TV look composition. My top layer is the TV glare, the layer below it the mat for the footage that makes the TV shape, and the bottom layer is our footage pre-comp, containing all of our old TV effects and footage. I'm going to animate the scale of our footage pre-comp the same way an old TV would behave by scaling out on the sides first and then scaling up the rest of the screen. To do that, let's select our footage pre-comp and then hit S to reveal the scale property. Then, let's disable the constrain proportion switch so that we can scale the footage out on the X and Y separately. Move down in time three frames so that we should be on frame number three. Remember, frame zero is our first frame. Then set the scale Y to 2%, which makes it a thin horizontal line. Then set the X scale to zero, which scales it all the way into the center of the screen and out of existence. Set a scale keyframe by clicking on the scale property stopwatch. Next, move down to frame 15 and set the X scale to 90% which adds a new keyframe in the timeline. Then, move down in time to the one second mark and set another scaling keyframe with a value of 100 on both the X and Y axes. A quick RAM preview and we can see that we've got our TV image scaling out as it should, but there's still more to do. When an old TV turns on, the image usually goes from fuzzy white to full color as it scales and equalizes. Let's select our footage pre-comp and then choose Effect color correction, tint. Right now this is just making our footage black and white. I want to make everything white. So using the color pickers I'll make sure that both the map black 2 and map white 2 values are set to white. Move to frame 15 if you're not already there and in the effects panel set a keyframe for the tint property called amount to tint. This will set a keyframe with a value of 100. Next move down to the one second mark and set a new amount to tint keyframe with the value of 0%. A quick RAM preview and it's looking better but there's still some more work to do. Let's add a new solid by choosing layer new solid and then in the color picker choose black as the color. Let's also name the layer flare. Make sure it's the same size as the composition and then click OK to create the new solid. Not surprisingly, we're going to add a lens flare to the solid layer. We'll use that as the little flash that comes from the center of the screen when an old TV is turned on. With the flare layer selected, choose Effect Generate Lens Flare. In the Effects panel, let's set the lens type pulldown from 50 to 300 millimeter zoom to 35 millimeter prime. Let's also grab hold of the flare and move it to the center of the screen. If you can't do it by hand, in the effects panel, you can set the flare center numbers to 320 for X and 240 for Y. That'll do it. Now we have our flare, but we can't see anything behind it. So let's change the transfer mode from normal to add. Good. Next, let's animate our flare. At frame zero, in the effects panel, set the flare brightness to 0% and then add a keyframe by clicking on the flare brightness stopwatch. Then move down to frame 3 and set the flare brightness value to 85. Then move down 10 frames to frame 13 
and set the flare brightness back to zero. If I scroll back and forth in time, I'm starting to like the way this looks, but that red circle on the flare is a bit too saturated. So, with my flare layer selected, I'll choose Effect, Color Correction, Hue and Saturation. Then, in the Effects panel, set the Master Saturation to negative 65. Alright, that looks much better. Let's just move our flare layer below our glare layer. While it doesn't affect anything at this point, in our next step we're going to need it there. Let's add an adjustment layer by choosing Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And then let's move the new adjustment layer below the glare layer, but above the flare layer. OK. As I've mentioned in previous tutorials, adjustment layers are used to add effects to every layer below itself. And since I now want to add a glow to everything but the TV glare, I've moved the adjustment layer below the glare layer, so it won't be affected by the glow effect. Now, let's add a glow effect to the adjustment layer, and therefore every layer below itself, by selecting our adjustment layer, and then choosing Effect, Stylize, Glow. At frame 15, in the Effects panel, let's add a Glow Intensity keyframe with the default value of 1 by clicking on the Glow Intensity stopwatch. Then, let's move down in time to the 1 second mark and set the Glow Intensity value to 0. We're just about there, but one last step. Turn on Motion Blur for the composition and the footage pre-comp layer. Now, as the footage scales out and up, there will be some blurriness caused by the motion. A quick RAM preview, and we have our TV turning on. As far as shutting it off, just reverse the animation keyframes. You can do it by hand, or you can use the After Effects keyframe assistant designed for this purpose. The way this tool works is that you select all of your keyframes, and then choose Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Time Reverse Keyframes. The problem, as you can see, is that After Effects has reversed each layer's keyframes on their own and hasn't grouped them all together and reversed them as a group. Since not all of the keyframe sets start and end at the same time, we get the situation where the overall animation isn't really reversing so much as each property is reversing separately, which is not what we want. I'm going to undo that. OK. Now, the best solution that I can think of is to add in keyframes so that all of the animated properties have their first and last keyframes at the exact same time. Just use the keyframe checkbox to add in a keyframe at frame 1 and then also do it at the 1 second mark, the beginning and end of our TV on animation. Once I've done this, I'll select all of my keyframes and choose Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Time Reverse Keyframes. Then, just drag the keyframes to wherever you want your TV to turn itself off. A final RAM preview, and you can see the animation of our TV turning on, playing, and turning off. Since this was such a popular request, I'll be spending the next two months of podcasts showing you how to animate several other common household appliances turning on and off, such as a toaster, a dishwasher, and a VCR. Look, after a year of this, I really hope you guys know I'm kidding. Don't forget, you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AE podcasts. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.